Welcome back to Lee's Lately. Today we're going to be talking about Daniel Farker and his current role at the club. A lot of people have been um, calling his job into question over the last day or so, especially after the defeat against Burnley. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. Before we get into it though, make sure you go ahead and hit that big red button down below as it massively helps me out. So, yeah. Okay, the time to make this video is now because people are calling into question Daniel Farker. There's been people calling into Daniel question... That was wrong. Calling into question Daniel Farker for quite a while now as well. People saying that he's tactically inept, bad substitutions. Look, some of the things that are being levelled at Daniel Farker are fair criticism. Obviously, nobody is above criticism. Some of them aren't fair, and that's what we're kind of going to dig into today. So the first thing we're going to do is look at how have we been performing recently. Well, we've had three wins in the last 12 in the championship, if you include the end of last season. And we're not including the playoffs either, which we obviously drew one, won one, lost one. We're not including that either because it's not in the regular season. We're just talking about the um, championship games. And three wins in the last 12 is not very good at all. It really isn't. Um, when you actually look at Daniel Farker's record, under Leeds United, he's got like a 1.8 something, 1.9 something points per game. It's actually better than what he had in his time at Norwich. I've granted that's because they went up to the Premier League and stuff, but it's one of the highest point scoring records he's ever had. And Leeds got to 90 points last season. I always say this, we got to 90 points last season. Daniel Farker's teams always struggle at the start of a season especially in the championship, and then they build up ahead of steam like we did last year. Well, we built up ahead of steam where we had a ridiculous amount of games where we didn't even concede a goal. Now, yes, that ended badly, and we obviously ended up dropping a load of points at the end, but think about it. Ipswich and Leicester also dropped a load of points at the end. It's just that they were slightly ahead of us at the time, and therefore we didn't go up. Any other season, we go up. Look, this has been over and over this point. We've said that as well. What I think is that Daniel Farker needs to be given some more time. Now, people go, oh, he's been given enough time. Well, he's had, let's say that this was Bielsa, right? In the first season, we lost in the playoffs and didn't go up. And then if you'd have said to people, let's sack Bielsa after about, what, a few weeks of the, of the second season after the window had ended, people would be like, whoa, hold on a second. You've, you've got to give him time with the new signings. That's what I think we've got to do here. We've got to give Daniel Farker some time with his new players, with his new signings, because you cannot just give a, play, a manager the players he wants and then go, oh, one game after you've signed them, or two games after you've signed them, one of which we've won, sack him. It doesn't work like that. You've got to give him some more time, and that's what I think it comes down to. So how much time do we give him then? Let's put a number on it. With Leeds at the moment, you've got a good few games left of this season. We've only just started. I don't think, look, if it doesn't turn around by Christmas and it's like we're mid-table, then you go, okay, that's totally fair enough. But I think what you've got to do before you even make your judgments on saying whether you want him to kind of, whether you would like him replaced or not, you've got to give him some more games than what we've seen. So you've got to give him to probably the November international break. Because if you bring in a new manager then in the November international break, this is for argument's sake, devil's advocate, because I don't want him out. If you bring in a new manager at the end of, uh, at the mid-November point, and he's got a few weeks to kind of put his spin on things and the way he wants Leeds to play, then that's probably an ideal time to do it if you were to swap a manager. At the moment, don't just pull the trigger. And I know that the 49ers aren't like this anyway. They're not trigger happy they're not just going to go oh no we've haven't done very well he's gone give him some time our next fixtures let's have a little look at our next fixtures so cardiff city and coventry city away and at home respectively we've got a good chance of getting six points out of those two games if you get six points out of those two games leading into the norwich and sunderland games you start to think all right well we're in a little bit of a better position here and I think we can then build up a bit of a head of steam. After Sheffield United and Watford, it's Bristol City, Plymouth, Millwall, QPR, Swansea and Luton. You could well see us getting a load of points out of those games. So, and let's not forget as well, Leeds were good in that first half against Burnley. And you'll go, oh, half of football is not enough. But it is enough if you take your chances. Because we could have been 3-1 up in that first half. 
Point being that Daniel Farker is not tactically inept. No matter what anyone says, he is not tactically inept. He has a set of tactics that have worked on a number of occasions in the championship. He has a track record to prove it. He has more of a track record to prove that he can get out of this division than any other manager in this division currently, or maybe ever in the championship. So you have to give him that time to, to get this settled down and get into the season properly. We're in a better position, I think, than when we were last season. We have some new players coming in. We need to give them a little bit of time to bed in. I think, honestly, we'll be fine. The other thing that people level at Daniel Farker, and this is a criticism which I think is totally fair, he's bad at making substitutions. Or certainly, he doesn't make the substitutions I would make. Take yesterday's game, for example, against Burnley. He takes off Brendan Aronson, who is our only creative number 10, and puts on Joel Peru in there, which we know doesn't work. For me, that's a bad decision and anyone can see it. He brings off Ampadu, which is fair because he was injured, and he brings on Joe Rothwell. Bring on Altanaka. Why aren't you bringing on Altanaka when he's been signed as a permanent signing to do that job? So those are the two substitutions I would have made at first. I would have also brought on Ramazani um, for Solomon as well to try and pr provide a little bit of pace. And you saw what Ramazani could do when he came on for, what, eight, nine minutes, something like that? He was running at defences. He was scaring them. He was putting the absolute SH1Ts up them. They were scared of what Ramazani was going to do. We need to see more of that earlier in a game. So, yeah, the substitutions, they're too late. They're often the wrong substitutions and they often take the sting out of the game. So, yeah, I think he's bad at making substitutions. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's a bad manager overall, though, because... He sets us up to win games and we don't take the chances. It's our players not taking the chances. Matteo Joseph, from the press that Daniel Farker has set up, won the ball off Estev yesterday, got him through on goal and he missed. Then you've got Wilfred Nonto. Aronson, who's in the number 10, who is a good number 10 for us, plays a perfect incisive pass through the back line and Nonto hits it straight at the goalkeeper. Then you've got some other shots. Uh, Brent... Um, not Brendan Aronson, it was Matteo Joseph curled one from the edge of the box. Very good save by the goalkeeper. We had 17 shots in that game, most of which coming in the first half. So you cannot blame Farker for not putting Leeds in a position where they can win games. Because if Leeds took those chances, we win that game 3-1. Burnley weren't even very good. So this is what I mean. You've got to separate what's happening here. You cannot just simply blame everything on the manager. It is a joint effort. It's a team game. So if you look at that game yesterday and you go, well, Daniel Farker, he played, um, he made the wrong substitutions. He brought the wrong players on at the wrong time. Agree with you there. But you also have to say, okay, well, what are the positives that Daniel Farker did? He set leads up in a way that allowed them to create enough chances to score three goals in that first half, at least. So, so you go, okay, well, Matteo Joseph, there's something on him for missing that one. Wilfred Nonto, there's something on him for missing that one. The referee for not giving a penalty on that tackle from behind on Solomon, which was a stonewall penalty. You have to apportion blame fairly. And if you have a bias against the manager, just try to take a step back a second and go, OK, well, did we create a lot of chances in this game? Were we set up to be able to win this game? I think in yesterday's game, you have to say yes. And then you go, OK, well, why didn't we win those games when we were set up in a position to do so? Because our striker, our left winger, didn't score golden opportunities and our referee for the game didn't give us a penalty. So I just think you have to take a step back, say, OK, let's look at this objectively rather than subjectively. Has Daniel Farker set us up to win here? Could we have done anything more player-wise to win that game? Yesterday, definitely. In a lot of games, definitely. So... That's what I want you to do. Next time you're about to criticise Daniel Farker, think, OK, well, yeah, Daniel Farker, he has got some criticism that we can level at him for that game. But also, what did he do right? What were Leeds not able to do on the pitch that wasn't his fault? And then you start to go, OK, well, it's a bit of a shared blame here. And that's what I kind of want to get to. So give him a bit more time. Give him to the November international break. And then say, OK, if it's still not going well now, let's think about replacing him. But even if we do replace him, I've got a list of available coaches here on Transfermarkt. It's, it's, not, it's not a list 
that is littered with people either we could get or are good enough for us. So at the top of the list, you've got, okay, Frank Lampard, never going to happen. Not good enough either. Graham Potter, people saying he's call, they were calling for him. He's been out of work for over a year now. Is he good enough? Is he waiting for the England job? What's going to happen there? Uh, Jürgi Löw, the German international manager, not going to drop to the championship. Thomas Tuchel, Xavi, not going to drop to the championship. Massimo, uh, Massimiliano Allegri from Juventus, no. Edzin Terzic from Borussia Dortmund, no. David Moyes, a lot of people were saying they would like David Moyes. Don't think he's going to do that. And then when you look down even further, you start to go, okay, well, look, Sam Allardyce, not a chance of doing that again. Greg Berhalter, Jesse Marsh, but worse. So, Javi Gracia, last club he was at was at Leeds, May 2nd, 2023. So I don't, I, I just don't think there's anyone particularly out there who's available who will be able to come in and do a good job for Leeds that would also be willing to come to Leeds. So that's where I'm at with it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching Leeds lately. I'll see you in the next one.